What's up, folks? Uh, it is Tuesday afternoon, and I am getting ready for a brew day tomorrow evening, Wednesday. And uh, <clears throat> this brew day is going to be the uh, Be Hokey Home Brews uh, Hop Challenge that he put together. There's a little hop experiment, I guess I should say. Not a hop challenge, but uh, I'll link the two videos that he's got going on and the more info down below the video here. So if you want to go check that out, I won't go through all that. But uh, anyway, I didn't get to brew this weekend, so I'm going to try to do it Wednesday, tomorrow night. And I uh, thought I'd get everything ready tonight because when I brew during the week, you know, I, I get off work and come home and jump right on it. And the more I can have done the night before, the, the earlier I can get done when I brew. And you're looking at five or six hours either way. So uh, what I'll do tonight is uh, get my grains measured out and crushed and into a uh, bucket, seal it up, and, and it'll be ready for tomorrow night. And I'll get my strike water measured out and into my hot liquor tank and put a lid on it and... Uh, It'll be ready to roll outside and heat up when I get home. That's the first thing I'll do. Get it pumped in the mash tongue, get the grains in, blah, 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 go from there. But uh, And also tonight I'll get my yeast starter going. Uh, the uh, Hokey Homebrew, uh, he called, you know, he wanted everybody to use American L uh, Y Yeast 1056. And believe it or not, I have a homebrew shop with like 45 minutes away. And another two homebrew shops like within an hour and a half from here. And last week, I was planning on brewing this weekend. And, and last Wednesday or Thursday, I called to see, because uh, I didn't have any Y yeast 1056 you know, on hand. So I called to, to try to get some. And all three of them were out, uh, which blows my mind. But as popular as that yeast is, but uh, maybe that's why they were out. Anyway, one of the shops, they don't even sell Y yeast. They use White Labs. But... I did happen to have uh, two vials of WLP-001, which is uh, the mate to the 1056. So I'm going to use that Hokey Homebrew. I know I didn't mention it to you, but that's what I'm going to go ahead and use. I got I got extra on hand, and uh, might as well use it. So I'll be making a starter with that tonight. And I don't know <clears throat> if any of you other folks are using a starter, but mine will sit on the stir plate. Uh, the, normally the way I do, if I don't uh, make it weigh like, through the if i don't make it like two days ahead of time to where i have time to chill and decant you know let everything all the yeast settle out i'll do it like the night before and and um, i'll pitch it at like right a little bit less than 24 hours you know something like that the recommended is and i got a cricket in here uh 12 to 18 hours on the stir plate or they say you know if you're gonna pitch the whole thing uh go ahead and do it like 12 or 18 hours before the brew day so or before pitching time so that's what i'm gonna do but anyway i'll make that tonight and i may show all that stuff i've never really done a video on my i've not i've shown my stir plate build but i've never really done a video on making a starter but if nothing else i'll talk about it but as i'm doing or when i do it
And there you go, mess and all. Twelve and a half pounds of two row, half pound of crystal sixty, and some rice holes that I threw in there. To, so I wouldn't forget them tomorrow. <clears throat> Got my strike water ready. Seven gallons in there. I'll use four of it. For my strike water and got my grains crushed, uh, sealed up and ready to go. So let's go make a yeast starter. Time to make a yeast starter. And if you don't make yeast starters, you should. Uh, just to make sure your yeast is viable. I, I don't know, especially this time of year, uh, this one particular vial of yeast I bought, I had shipped from Texas because uh, I wasn't really just, I don't have any other excuse that day other than I just wasn't thinking. I just was ordering some stuff in order to buy the yeast because I knew I needed it. And I ordered from Austin, some stuff from Austin Homebrew Supply, uh, which now I don't even really order much from them. I get stuff locally. But anyway, uh, it shipped from Texas in the hot. And uh, so I just, I always want to make a starter anyway. Anything over a 10, 40 beer. I want to make a starter with just to make sure that yeast is good and ready to go. And um, Mr. Malty, uh, I use it, the calculator there. If you don't, if you don't know about it or don't use it, I'll I'll try to remember to put a link to it also down below in the more info section. But uh, for a continuous or for a stir plate, uh, it recommends a one liter starter for this 1064 beer that we're doing. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And all my yeast starter is, is, and there's a million videos, well not a million, but there's a lot of videos out there on it, is, uh, try to get this where you see it, just a half a cup of extra light DME, and uh, I'll throw that on the, in my little pot over there, and four cups of water to make a one liter starter. Um, sometimes I go over just, just a little over one liter, so it'll boil down a little bit, but boil it for 15 minutes. Um, Chill it down here in the sink with some ice packs. I usually don't use ice. I keep some, a bunch of gel packs and ice packs, and it'll cool down within 10 or 15 minutes easily to 60 some degrees. And then I'll pitch the old uh, vial of WLP001, which I'm going to use for this. Uh, pitch it, and uh, actually, what I use for my beaker, which some people go out and buy these nice, expensive beakers, and uh, this is my really expensive three dollar uh, vase that I got from Walmart that works perfectly on my stir plate so three bucks and I, and I know beakers are cool sometimes because you can heat and everything all in one container but I mean how hard is it I don't have to I don't think you have to worry about infections or stuff where and pouring from one or the other so you got a beaker a funnel your dry malt extract your water and your yeast and I mean, it's really simple, and I'll just, like I say, I'll, I'll have it done here in a few minutes, within the hour, and, and it'll be on the stir plate until tomorrow when I get ready to pitch it, so. Four cups of water and a half a cup of dry malt extra, extra light dry malt extra. Just get it all good and stirred up and mixed up with the whisk. Good old rolling bowl got started, and you'll see the hot break kick in here. Just going to pay attention to it, make sure it doesn't boil over, and uh, got my timer set. So, here in about 10, or here, here in about 15 minutes, I'll take her off and cool her down. 15 minutes is up, and I got the uh, wart here in the little uh, ice bath. You can see my little gel packs that I use, and... That water was at like 50 some degrees that I checked with my new CDN thermometer that I love. And I'll swirl that around a little bit and uh, pour it into the little uh, flower vase there that I use for my stir plate vessel. And I'll cover it with tin foil and everything's been sanitized with star sand. And that's a double IPA that I've been drinking on homebrew. And I need to quit drinking on that double IPA until I get this done. But, yeah, I'll just kind of sit here and move this around back and forth. And some of, some people's really anal, so just to let you know, I do spray the side of this while it's boiling with uh, star sand to uh, kill any bad germs. No, I, really, I do sanitize it really well. 
on the side that I'm going to pour from. That's one of the advantages of using or, or doing everything in a beaker that you don't have to transfer, blah, blah, blah. But of all the starters I've done, I've never had any kind of infection or anything, so I'm not really worried about it. I take really good care of it. So. Got the yeast chilled down, or the yeast. <laughs> Told you I shouldn't be drinking that double IPA while I'm making a yeast starter. I got my my yeast starter, my little wart, my little 1040 wart, uh, chilled down to like 68 degrees in no time, like five minutes probably. And I don't want to chill it down to, it's going to be in a in my chest freezer down there, which is like at 60 degrees, which is what my beer is going to ferment at. So, but I didn't want to uh, pitch the yeast at 60 degrees because I didn't want to shock the yeast too much. So I've got the yeast starter here, or the yeast starter, damn, I got the yeast here and I'm shaking it really well. But uh, one thing you'll learn about White Labs yeast vials, if you shake them and open them, you will get your ass sprayed with yeast uh, because it will foam all over you. Uh, so as soon as it settles down and everything, this is at room temperature. This is at room temperature. I'll pitch uh, the yeast into my little starter there and I'll go put my stir plate in there and put it on the stir plate and there you go. There is my yeast starter. There is my double IPA that I've been drinking on that I shouldn't have been drinking on while I'm making my yeast starter. And there is my little foil that I'm going to use. Everything's sanitized except for that. That's not sanitized. And here's my little stir bar that's sanitized and my fingers that are sanitized. And I haven't quite figured out a way to get the stir bar out of the sanitizer and into the starter without uh, touching it other than dropping it and spraying it with a sanitizer as it goes in. Uh, no, seriously, everything's cool. So let's get that bad boy in there and uh, get her covered up. And that's plenty good. You can see the Oktoberfest that's in here. Uh, gosh, I guess it likes another week before I keg it. And we're at 61 degrees. And flip the switch. And yep. it took off right off the bat. Sometimes it'll throw my little stir bar off. But, uh, There you go. You started is getting ready. God, I hope this video don't turn into be like a one hour long video just for a simple brew day. But I've never showed a lot of this stuff before, especially you started stuff. But anyway, I'll edit it down as much as I can. Burp. But everything is ready for a brew day. Grain. Strike water. You starter that you just saw. Beer Smith recipe. Double IPA. So uh, I guess the next little clip you'll see is me coming home from work tomorrow, getting all this stuff going, and uh, probably won't be much to that because it's the same old, same old. But anyway, hope you enjoy the vid, and uh, we'll uh, get this thing going. All right, it is Wednesday, and we are rocking and rolling. Uh, came home, got the uh, hot liquor tank rolled outside, and uh, got the burner fired up, and got seven gallons of water heating up, which, uh, like I said, I only use four out of it. Uh, I heat it up to about, probably, like I say, about 180 degrees, and I'll transfer it via the pump inside here. got the mash tun set up, and I'll transfer that in here at about 180 and uh, let it warm up the mash tun and let that temperature equalize, and uh, my strike temperature... My dough in temperature should be 164 degrees, and I've noticed that mine usually my grain temperature is like 70 degrees, but I've noticed uh, I usually need to go about two degrees higher, so I'll dough in at about 166 degrees, and by the time I stir and get her shut down, shut the lid, get the lid shut and all, I'll have my strike temperature of 152, hopefully. So, right, half hour to get 180 degree water. Turn that valve on. Let it prime the pump. Pump valve's already on. Go into the mash tun. And right after about 10 minutes, we got a 165 and a half. So I'm gonna go in. 
and I'm going to pour it all in there like I normally do since it's not too large a grain bill. Stir, stir, stir. It took about 10 minutes for everything to equalize uh, from like 100. Like I said, I pumped it in at 180. Uh, my dough in temperature is supposed to be 160, what I say, 164, and I always shoot a couple degrees higher to give me time to stir and all that good stuff, and I'm usually pretty much on it. So, stir just another few seconds here and uh, see what we got. I'm loving this CDN thermometer, by the way. Going anywhere from 151.8 to 152.5 through the hot spots and cool spots, so I'm gonna say that's on it. Okay, while I'm waiting on my um, mash, I've got an hour to kill and I'm starving to death, so we're gonna have supper here, uh, North Carolina style, North Carolina, North Carolina, North Khaki Lacky style. Uh, two pieces of bread, label out. JFG, there is no other mayonnaise. It's a sin to eat any other kind of mayonnaise. Gotta get you a big old teaspoon or tablespoon full. And it's gotta be on both sides of the bread. One side don't get it. And you always make sure you leave enough to lick the spoon. Homegrown maters, not tomatoes, not tomatoes. Maters from my little mater plant out back. And a little bit of salt and pepper. Now look at that beautiful piece of artwork. And that's supper, y'all. All right, got the Vorloff going on, a little bit of recirculation, and I'll do about a half gallon, usually. And it'll be plenty clear. And then I'll do my first runnings over into the bowl kettle and should, like I say, get about uh, two and a half gallons. And do the batch sparge, double batch sparge, and really, I know this is all redundant stuff, but I kind of want to show it since we're doing this experiment, but uh, there you go, full off going on, and everything's moving right along. Okay, are you bored out of your mind yet, watching this same old, same old, over and over, but uh, anyway, I got my pre-boil uh, volume, seven gallons instead of six and three quarters, like I usually overshoot it a little bit, but that's fine, hopefully it won't affect my gravity much. Uh, looking for a pre-boil gravity of 1.054, so I'm going to get me a sample and uh, get this thing to boiling. Um, got my hops already lined up. Let's see, it's 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.8 ounces at 60 minutes, 0.86 ounces at 30 minutes. There's my world flock at 15, and at 5, it's 0.67 ounces. So, yes, I got it exactly on it uh, to, to meet the... Uh, the IBUs that we're looking for. So I'm going to get this thing to boiling and uh, make sure some more here in a little bit. All right, I'm going to show you one more thing here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, rigged up my little ghetto whirlpool. Uh, basically, it was just a piece of half inch silicone tubing with a, uh, a dip tube that I'm not using on the end of it that had a little curve in it, so like a 90 degree. So uh, I'm recirculating using that, and it did really help the temperature get down a whole lot quicker, so I'm, I'm pleased with that. Uh, definitely look into mounting something or doing a little something different, but uh, 
anyway, uh, this batch is about done. It's been a long day. Um, so all I'm going to do here in a minute is get this in the fermenting bucket and uh, pitch the yeast and call it tonight and clean up tomorrow night, I believe, because it's getting late. I'm tired. So anyway, we'll see how this goes, uh, Hokey Homebrew, uh, with your uh, hop experiment. Hope everybody else has good success, and uh, looks like I boiled down to about five gallons, so hopefully my numbers will be right, and uh, I'll post that in one way or the other, you know, if, if I did hit my numbers at the end, so later.